thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. We're having some fun times today and we're talking about generation blessing and generation curse. And you may be watching today and you've got some family issues. You know, maybe with your parents or your grandparents or you may have issues with your kids or your marriage, your grandkids, something like that. But we would love to pray for you. So get on the phone, get on the website. Love to pray for you that God would help you with your family and really see God's presence in your family. And you know, when we talk about generations and, and families, I read something that I thought was really powerful and I wanted to pass this on to you. And this was like, this just takes my breath away. Every time I think about this, every time I read it, there's a gentleman uh, many, a couple hundred years ago, his name was Max Jukes, J-U-K-E-S. He was an atheist married uh, a woman that didn't really follow God as well. And they raised their children to be atheists and not interested in God. Uh, of the many generations that followed from this couple, there was 560 descendants. Of those 560 descendants, remember they're atheists, not following God, disinterested, disconnected. Of those 560 offspring, 310 died as paupers. They were poor people. 150 were criminals, 100 of them were alcoholics, seven of them were murderers, and more than half of the women of the 560, more than half of them were prostitutes. And, and at the conclusion of all this, the descendants of Max Jukes cost the U.S. government more than $1.25 million in the in 19th century in the 1800s. They cost them because of, of prison and rehab, rehabilitation, all kinds of stuff. And that's, in essence, what happens when the, the Max Jukes decide, I'm not going to be a follower of Christ. I'm not going to follow God. But that's kind of discouraging. But I want to flip it on the other side. And I want us to consider uh, Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards was a very strong believer uh, and a fairly famous American Christian back from the late 1700s. He and his wife had three, almost 1,400 descendants, offspring. Of them, of the 1,400, Almost 300 of them were college graduates. Now, Jonathan, believe, Jonathan Edwards was a very strong believer. Now, let's see what happens with his offspring. From his offspring, there were 13 college presidents, 30 judges, one dean of a law school, 80 of his descendants held public offices, 65 were college professors, 75 were officers in the military, 100 were well-known missionaries, there were 100 lawyers, three U.S. senators, three state governors, three mayors of large cities, one comptroller of the U.S. Treasury, one vice president of the United States. This is offspring from a believer, a godly man and godly wife, his wife. And when you look at the contrast between these, you know, being a believer has tremendous effects on, on future generations. Being an unbeliever, a doubter, has tremendous effects on, on future generations. And, you know, I read that, Mom, and it just always perks my ears up to, right. to understand the power of the generation blessing, power of generation curse. And you've been talking about this for, for literally decades because it's well, so powerful. I, because it's so powerful. And when you study it in the Bible and then just study it in people's lives, like you just gave this wonderful example, yeah. we see the decisions we make now are very important to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And one of those decisions can be that you break the curse, you come to Jesus, He takes the curse from you. And if you're needing prayer over your family, this is a good time to call us for prayer. Because when you hear this, you think, oh God, I want good things to happen to my children, my grandchildren. If Jesus tarries, I want good things. So we begin to see this generation blessing comes from, of course, faith in the heart of the person and also speaking what God says over the person. So I noticed throughout Old Testament, New Testament, they spoke blessings over children. And even ungodly people wanted people who knew God to speak blessings over them because they knew the power of the spoken blessing. So Jacob, you know, when he's dying, he's called Israel. He speaks blessing over his children and his grandchildren, and we see them literally come to pass. So what we are speaking is being passed on from generation to generation. Now, let me share something with you that is really on my heart, and this is from Luke 11. You see in Luke 11, 
where when a household is cleaned up, this person gets saved, you know, all the mess they're forgiven of, all the trash of the past, that curse is broken. You know, they're free. Jesus redeems us from the curse. But then it says that Satan, evil spirits, wait for the next generation. And they come to the next generation and they think, oh my goodness, the house is cleaned up, but this house, you know, this is, these are the children. And so we can move in on them. So yeah, that curse of alcohol was broken. That curse of cancer was broken. But these children don't know how to speak the blessing and they don't know how to maintain the blessing. And so they come in and it says their end is seven times worse than before. And so you say, well, what about Christians' children who are all involved in some of this stuff? It's very important for me, for you, all of you who are parents to maintain a blessing in your children. How do we maintain the blessing? I think this is very key. We maintain the blessing in them by from the time they're tiny, taking them to church when they're babies. And a lot of people when they have a baby don't come to church for several months. And I think unless there's a really good reason, I was in church the next week after Sarah was born. Why? Because I wanted my children to see that God is first. And so you start them in that. But I find sometimes people use their children as an excuse to do a dropout. And an interesting thing that is happening in our church is that we have some Buddhist parents who bring their children to our children's department on Sunday because they said, we want them to learn good values. The parents don't come to church, but they don't want the children to not have the values that Christians have. I just think this is interesting. So then I say sometimes when, as children grow up, you know, the parents say, we're so busy. You know, they have basketball, they have soccer, they have softball, we have the prompts, all these things going on, and they don't involve them in the youth ministry. Now, folks, I don't think everything in a church is perfect, but you need to keep your children involved in church, in the Bible, in prayer, if you want to maintain the blessing. Because the enemy is just waiting to jump on your children, your grandchildren, because he would like to devour the generation blessing. So there's a maintenance ugh, that we must, must continue. So do you mind if I talk about the Rechabites right no, here? No, that's great. Well, the Rechabites, you say, who are they? Gourmet food or something? No, 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 no. They're in the Bible. And during the time when Israel got into sin, was taken into captivity to Assyria, the Rechabites, God had spoken a special blessing over this family. And he had told them that they were not to own any land. They were to take care of flocks and to be led as he led them. So when Ahab and Jezebel were in all this mess, the Rechabites didn't own land, you know, but they had flocks, so they would lead them back and forth. And they were also told they were not to drink wine, not to own land, not to drink wine, you know, to be flock keepers. So the children made that kind of a commitment. Well, then God speaks to Jeremiah and says, bring the Rechabites in and pour all of them a glass of wine. So he does it. And they said, no, we can't drink that. We have a commitment on our family to God that he blesses us, and this is part of the commitment that we not drink and they won't do it. And Jeremiah uses them as an example for a family blessing. Now, when the northern kingdom is led into captivity, <laughs> the Rechabites didn't go. You say, well, where were they? God told them, take their flocks and go to Judah. So while all that mess is happening up there, they're in Judah with their flocks. And God protected them and their family and their family tree and today, my understanding is you can go to Jericho and there are Rechabites because they maintain the blessing with their children and their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. So when you were growing up, did you ever ask, could you not go to church? You, no. Well, I might have floated the idea once and the reaction was, you know, 
relatively severe, <laughs> so I don't think I asked frequently. Only thing I remember doing one time you we were traveling, and I asked Dad if I could wear my little Chuck Taylor Converse high tops to church, and that was like the real push the envelope. But church attendance, we we just went. I mean, yeah, you didn't, didn't think, think uh, uh, -uh. I didn't think it twice about it. Sunday morning, yeah, Sunday night, yep. Wednesday night, yep. it was Friday your lifestyle, prayer. right? And, now, and granted, the people may say, well, you're a pastor's kid. But I've watched families over the years mm -hmm. that are not pastors. So have I. And they get their kids in church. Their kids are there. They may not like everything, the music, music, whatever this, yeah, that, yeah. whatever. Just like the rest of humans, there are things we like better than others. But nevertheless, we learn and we coach ourselves to do right things that are going to have good outcomes. And so having the discipline of church attendance, consistent church attendance, and I'm not talking Christmas and Easter, because right. some people say, well, that's consistent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Christmas twice a year. No, I'm talking on a weekly basis. I have never, I have never regretted that commitment. And there are times when I go to church that, yeah, I get more out of it, and sometimes I don't get as much out of it. Yeah. But it's a good for me, it's healthy for me, honors God, puts God first in my time and my thoughts. It's fantastic. So I just encourage you, we need church, you need church, and it's very, very, very essential for us with our kids to make sure our kids stay in church, not just once or kind of expose them, but that they have a lifestyle. The church is part of our lifestyle. And if this has been an area of struggle for you, I just encourage you hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you. And maybe your kids say, well, we don't want to do that. And it's, you know, you're kind of swimming upstream. <laughs> we want to pray for you that number one, God would give you wisdom. And number two, God would give you strength. And number three, that God would turn the hearts of your kids, that they would be passionate and hungry for God. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And when we come back in just a little minute, we're going to be seeing how the generation blessings were not only for the Old Testament, but also for the New Testament. Stay tuned. Now is the time to shatter the past and take control of your family's future. God has a great plan and future for you and your family. You can break generational curses and live under generational blessings. Let God heal your family and reverse the bad thinking and harmful conduct passed down through the generations. Live every day in the positive spiritual, physical, and psychological health promise for you. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you two cherished books and teachings from Marilyn and Sarah. You will receive Breaking Generational Curses and Blessing the Next Generation, both filled with anointed insight and life-changing encouragement. We will also send you the Imparting the Blessing 2 CD set. Learn about the very powerful, very biblical keys to living in the freedom and blessing that Jesus died to bring us. All for your gift of $35 or more. Call or click today. that you're watching today and we've been talking about generation blessings and you know we talked you know about the Rechabites in the Old Testament but I want to take just a brief moment here and encourage you that there's generation blessing in the New Testament and not just the Old Testament. We think back in the New Testament you've got in Acts 21 we read verse 9 about uh, Philip and how Philip had four daughters and all of his four daughters were prophetesses. It's a tricky one to say, but they were they all prophesied. And then you think about Timothy. Timothy, who wrote first and second Timothy, he was powerfully used by God, but that was generation blessing because his mother was a believer and his grandmother was a believer. And we have this really great book, Mom, called Blessing the Next oh, Generation. I love this book. I, you just and wanna, I did this together. We did. This is a Marilyn and Sarah project. Right. 
right. totally cool. And I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, and we want, to, we want you to get this book. This book will be a tremendous blessing in your life about generation blessing. So many things in our world are negative and curses and pessimistic, but God, <laughs> he's optimistic. He's always hoping, always believing. Right. I mean, love, light, life, that's who God is. And that's generation blessing. So hop on the phone and I would encourage you, don't just get one. You probably want to use this for your book club or your Bible study group. Uh, this would be really great discussion, especially, you know, mom, women, we love to talk, you we know, do. We small communicate. groups, right? Yeah. And we love our book study, you know, study groups and our book clubs. <sighs> what a great way to, to talk about Jesus and talk about our families and connecting Jesus into our families in a book club. And Sarah, I love this about this book too. It tells you how to maintain the blessing with your children and really how to maintain your own blessing. Because, you know, folks, we get born again, we get spirit filled, we get all excited. Then we have pressures on our life and maybe you have an unsaved mate and that's not so simple either. And then we begin to kind of go downhill because we don't quite know what to do with them and then the children, you know. But I love this. When my mother was threatened by my father that he would kill her if she went to church, she told him, she looked at him and said, you will never kill me because when I go to church, I pray for you and the only help you're going to get is from Jesus. You know, <laughs> and I saw her do it because I was so frightened that he was going to kill her. But her blessing turned my father around and she claimed him. He got born again, water baptized before he died. And so... And what happened, I have a brother, my brother's passed away, but he got born again, he got spirit filled, I got turned on to God. So that generation blessing, that is so powerful. And I like this about Philip. I have a gut feeling about Philip that he read in Joel how God would pour out his spirit on daughters would prophesy. And then it was quoted in Acts 2. I think he decided, my daughters are going to prophesy. You know, this is scriptural. Are you claiming scriptural things for your children? That can be such a blessing. And one night I was at your house or one afternoon, a Wednesday afternoon. And so I said, well, I'll see you all at church tonight. And you said, no, we're not going to church tonight. I forget if they had homework. I don't know. <laughs> and oh, all three of them just, what? <laughs> we can't go to church. I thought, goodness sake, this is a calamity. They so wanted to go to church. And finally, I think you gave in and let them go. But see, maintaining, making this the center of your life instead of their sports. And I'm for sports. I go to the games. I like them. I think it's healthy. But if it's not the center and it becomes the center, you won't maintain the blessing because they can't call on soccer to save them when they get in a problem. That's true. And mm. you know, some of these chapters, Mom, oh. are so powerful. Chapter two talks about turn it around. Blessing versus mm. curse, you know, the curse and turning it into a blessing. Chapter three, confront your daddy's demons. Outrun four, outrun what runs in your family. Five, base your family's future on truth. Six, develop a faith worth passing on. And these are just some of the chapters that are in this book. So really, you need to get the book, and not only for yourself, but for your friends. You can give them to your, your parents, you can give them to your kids, you can give them to your neighbors, you can give them to coworkers. It's a really great resource, and think about them for birthdays, think about them for Christmas, you know, special events. These are tremendous blessings wherever you send the Word of God. So hop on the phone, get on the website, Blessing the Next Generation. And this is what it means, creating a lasting family legacy with the help of a loving God. So grab this today. It'll be a huge, huge blessing in your life as well as your family's life and those around you. You know, I think a lot of times we don't know how to bless our family. And plus we failed a lot. Because, you know, I, I went to God with my failures because I felt like I failed so much with Michael, you know. And so God said to me one time, he said, you know, you've repented over this over a thousand times. He said, but some of the things he did were his choices, you know. So I think sometimes we want to be a perfect parent and we're not. But we have a perfect father. And this, this will so encourage you, really. How many times did I feel like I blew it, didn't do it all right? 
But I'm telling you, if you keep blessing and keep in God's word, you will get the fruit because what you put in, honey, is what you're going to get out. This, you better call right now. You say, I need five or 10 of them. Yes, you do. You are right. And it will help you. It'll help you to maintain, but it also can help you start a blessing. Because a lot of you watching say, I don't have a clue what to do. Here it is. This is a how-to book. You'll love it. You know, the other thing too, one of the things I really appreciate about, appreciate about you and dad is that you were always consistent. The people you were in the pulpit were the same people you were at home. There wasn't a discrepancy. There wasn't hypocrisy. It was pretty much the same thing all the way through. And and one of the things I love about this book, it speaks to that continuity and speaks to any places in our lives where we might tend in, to be hypocrites or there's a disconnect, really speaks to some of that stuff so that we are genuine through and through in our own personal walk with God. And, and what we share with our kids, with our grandkids, comes through as Jesus and not hypocrisy. And so I just encourage you, pick up the phone, get on the website, and let's really, really nestle into God, nestle into what He has for us, not only for us, but also for our generations. And as a mother, if you're watching today and you're a mom, I'm a mom, and I don't know that there's anything more important in our lives except Jesus than our kids. If you're like me, you think about your children, you think, you know, I'd do anything for my kids. And I've watched moms over the years, over decades, we, we lay down our lives for our kids. You know, we take two jobs, we do this, you know, and we go to all kinds of extremes because we love our kids. And ultimately, the best thing that we could ever give our kids and, and help them to cultivate is a vibrant relationship with Jesus. That our kids, if there's anything I could do for my kids to make them successful, I want them to learn how to handle money. I want them to be responsible. I want them to be good citizens. I want them to be, you know, healthy and, and all those things. But at the end of the day, what's more important to me than anything else is that my kids have their own personal vibrant relationship with Jesus. And that's generation blessing. No matter what you say, that's generation blessing. So hop on the phone, get on the website. This book will be a great resource for you. And you might think about passing it on to your kids, your grandkids. You might think about passing it up to your parents or your grandparents and really thinking this could be a great family blessing to us. Maybe give it to the people in your apartment complex, people at work, some of your friends at school. This will be a tremendous blessing in your life. So get on the phone, get on the website. God wants to help you to be a blessing and also to bless through you and to you as well. I just know God has good things, Mom. Sarah, I feel led to pray for people yep. right here and for, because I think we touched a nerve that's where we can be hurt the most is in family. Our parents let us down or we as parents, I mean, that can really hurt. So put your hand on the screen and pray with me. Say, Father, I thank you that you know how to break a curse, that you forgive me of any ways that I have failed and I'm cleansed, I'm forgiven. And I thank you, Father, for helping me begin the blessing and maintain the blessing. And I don't take condemnation, but I take encouragement that you're encouraging me today. You're not putting me down. You're picking me up. You're picking my family up. And I am going to see my family in a generation blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to say to you again before we close, Jesus heard that prayer. You put your hand on the screen. You watch him work and move in your life. And remember, if you haven't called in for the book, Blessing the Next Generation by both Sarah and me, you need to call right away and get it and be blessed. God wants to encourage you today as a family. Now is the time to shatter the past and take control of your family's future. God has a great plan and future for you and your family. You can break generational curses and live under generational blessings. Let God heal your family and reverse the bad thinking and harmful conduct passed down through the generations. Live every day in the positive spiritual, physical, and psychological health promise for you. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you two cherished books and teachings from Marilyn and Sarah. You will receive Breaking Generational Curses and Blessing the Next Generation both filled with anointed insight and life-changing encouragement. 
We will also send you the Imparting the Blessing to CD set. Learn about the very powerful, very biblical keys to living in the freedom and blessing that Jesus died to bring us. All for your gift of $35 or more. Call or click today. We are so excited to invite you to come with us on our fall group trip. It is a trip of a lifetime. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this trip. We get to go to China and Tibet and Singapore. And mom, it's not just that we're going to pop through those places. No, no. It's exciting what we get to do there. Yeah, we will do prayer walking in China. We'll do it in Tibet. Can you imagine? But also we're going to Singapore and I will be ministering in New Creation Church at Joseph Prince's Church. So it will be a glorious opportunity for you. And I wouldn't just think of myself, I would think of how many people I could get to go with me. And why not scholarship some people? When these trips are ministry times, and really it is an opportunity of a lifetime. So don't put it off, pray about it, go with us. God is gonna say yes, go with Marilyn and Sarah. It's very, very important for you. Children and family are such an important part to our hearts. And all of us who have children, all of us with our parents, we know that family is a very, very essential ingredient in our lives. And you know, I think about in Psalms, it says, one generation will declare the glories of God to the next generation. And I believe that many of you watching today, you probably have kids or you think about your parents and maybe they're not serving God. Maybe they're not interested in God. Maybe they seem to be rebelling against God or they just don't give a rip. They think, you know, well, if God really cares about me, you know, something will happen. They're just ambivalent. And I wanna encourage you today that God is working in their hearts and no prayer that you pray for your children or for your parents goes unheard. That God hears our prayers and, and more than hearing our prayers, God is very much engaged in working and dealing in their hearts. So please get on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for your family, that your kids would come to know Christ and be committed to Christ, that your parents would be absolutely in love with Jesus more than anything else. And mom, it's such a, a, a cool thing generationally. You know, your mom was a strong believer, you're a strong believer, I'm a strong believer. Uh, my kids, you know, it's just continuing to con the generation blessing, if you will. That's and true. we want that for our viewers. And I want to tell you, they're more than what Sarah's saying. My grandmother, wonderful Christian, and my cousin has her Bible. Oh, the places she cried in it, the places she underlined, and that came down. Now I see my grandchildren loving the Bible, wanting to speak what God says. That's a generation blessing that God has promised to us. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now call in or get on the website and have us pray for your family that you and your family are going to serve God with all their hearts, not half-hearted, wholehearted, do it now.